Right, hello everyone. The, the clock is running. Um, yeah, thank you to Wikidata for the opportunity to speak here today. I will be talking about reinstating female artists to the cultural record. First off, what am I doing here? I work for an organization called DIGIS, which is the Forschungs- und Kompetenzzentrum Digitalisierung Berlin. We are a state-funded body. Uh, we're based in the Zuse Institute in Berlin, which is a part of the high-performance computing network uh, in Germany. But we are involved with GLAMS, with culture institutions in Berlin, helping them get their analog uh, treasures online, digitized online, uh, making high-quality metadata. And one of our major focuses is also long-term digital preservation. So we assist them with all of that. And as I said, it's state-funded, so, uh, and with a focus on Berlin, so we work with Berlin institutions. And our standard operating procedure is that we take the metadata that the, uh, that the culture institutions have produced, and that is ingested into the Deutsche Digitale Bibliothek. That's our main focus. And then uh, on Europeana, if the metadata is appropriately licensed, not all the institutions put out their, uh, their metadata with CC0. But that's our standard route. But we're always looking at new ways to present data because a lot of the museums and the cultural institutions we work with, archives as well, um, sometimes focus a bit too much on putting the data on a website. You've got to realize that we're dealing with institutions, sometimes very small institutions in Berlin, where there's just one or two people working. Um, they're really happy if they've just got a website. If we start coming to them and saying, hey, start producing your metadata in Lido or Metsmods or whatever, they tend to have a bit of a a crisis, but that's why we've got this funding program to try and help them through it, because we also would like the data that they produce to be usable for machines, to really leverage the power of the semantic web and link data. Which is why we became interested in looking at Wikidata, because some of our partners were actually using Wikidata already pretty much as a resource. They weren't inputting any data, uh, but to make their whole... Uh, um, What's the word? We have a collection management easier. They will then connect to Wikidata to save them the trouble of inputting everything. And that's how we ended up with the Berliner Mailweiber, as they are called. So Mailweiber is a pejorative term, um, which was mean, just means painting women. And it, was refer it used to refer to women artists who were not take taken seriously by the male-dominated academe at the turn of the last century. So these were women who were painting, but uh, they weren't allowed to study at any universities or any higher education institutions. They were allowed to maybe go to painting schools, but they were producing a lot of work, <clears throat> pretty much. I mean, some of the artists that we've got in the, in the database are early, I think, 1850s as well, but most of it was around at the turn of the century. So this is Anna Benhardi's uh, self-portrait from 1891, I think. And the first... It's only in Berlin, the first uh, time women were admitted to the uh, Hochschule der Künste was 1919, so it took a while before they got any recognition for the work that they were doing. So the Stadtmuseum in Berlin uh, in 2016 had a temporary exhibition called Berlin Stadt der Frauen, where they tried to redress this imbalance a bit and to showcase a lot of the work that they have. The Stadtmuseum has their artworks uh, and to actually put an exhibition for them. Of the 20 women who were uh, the main focus of the exhibition, most of them are already quite famous, but there's still quite a few uh, paintings, uh, artworks in the museum that are of less known, uh, lesser known artists. And that's why, as part of this program, uh, this is our website from Digis, there was a program then in 2016, or a project by the Stadtmuseum to then digitize a further 250 of their paintings and produce metadata to that. So that was the basis of our work. So standard uh, operating procedure, we announced the uh, ingest on the Wikidata um, import website. This is actually the old site. They've changed the way now. And uh, happily uh, cleaned up the data as much as I could in open refine because uh, I was dealing with a data set that had been edited by about three different uh, employees of the museum. So you notice immediately how great it would be if people would use controlled vocabularies and stuff like that because for materials and techniques, they were very often different words used to describe exactly the same concept. Did a whole lot of cleaning up, checked for uh, which artists were already existing in Wikidata, which had to be added new. All of this was uploaded, and then tragedy struck. Because for a lot of these artists, I had no reference, no external reference. I did not have any reference in the GND, the uh, German Authority Control. And so... 
The only place I could enter their data was in Wikidata. They didn't exist anywhere else. And a Wikidata admin, quite rightly, deleted 23 of the artists that I had added by saying, yes, no source, no site link, no backlink, no data to understand who they are. I waited a while, then I cancelled. So I engaged in a discussion with this admin, and he or she very kindly uh, restored the, um, the items that had been deleted. And it would give me, though, one opportunity to say, from my point of view, I did a bit of calculating back then. I may be wrong. This is a year ago now. There were 50 million items. Of those, a million had been deleted. That's about 2% of Wikidata. And I would argue, I realized today in the earlier session, it was said, look, Wikidata is hitting a resource problem. Good. Um, we need bigger machines. Um, but it would be interesting to say maybe the, the notability criteria should be made even more inclusive. Um, if it's clearly spam or vandalism, yes, that's, that's not an issue, but there's maybe some items that are a little bit on the borderline, and maybe Wikidata would be an interesting place to store that data, or Wikibase, if we're going to see it, some other options of what we can do with it. So a suggestion would be to set up some sort of arbitration process, because what annoyed me a little bit about uh, having my items deleted was the fact that I wasn't really given a chance to argue my case in any way, shape, or form. And it would be nice if someone gave me the opportunity just to say, hey, hang on, this is actually real data and explain the situation. On Wikipedia, we have pages very often with the banner on the top. This, uh, this page has some issues. Maybe we could think of something similar for Wikidata. But I do not know how realistic that suggestion is. It was just something I thought that might make people be more open to, uh, uh, to putting their work into Wikidata and not be too terrified that their work is going to be somehow deleted at some point. And just to remind you what the Wikidata criteria are, is it going to let me scroll? This is not my computer, and I am left-handed, so I'm struggling here a bit. Uh, I might just use my left hand. <laughs> ah. You can let me scroll? Yes. Ah, of course. Windows. Um, uh, there we go. So if it refers to an instance of a clearly identifiable concept, or material entity, the entity must be notable in the sense that it can be described using serious and publicly available references. So this was part of our battle then. How can we get a reference for an artist who was excluded by design from any form or record? Um, it's quite a complicated situation. And now I've got to get out of that page. Going back to the left hand. Finding the mouse. Hello, mouse. Anyone see the mouse? <laughs> Ah, there we go. Let's go back. So at this stage, there are still 19 artists without a GND. So this is the German uh, authority control. So these are all German artists or Berlin artists as well. Um, so one would hope that they would be that they would qualify for a GND ID, but at this stage, they do not have one. And I have artists, for example, like Ida Maura Hahn. Um, there we go where I can really only just say this much about her. I know she's human, I know she's female, and I know she's a painter. That's all I know. I'm not the domain expert. This is data I've got from the museum. The museum is busy setting up all sorts of other things, so it's, it's a little bit of a battle for them, too, to allocate resources to this, and we're sort of stuck in the middle diggers trying to make sure that good quality metadata is being created and uh, doing our best to ensure that that is done. Now... There we go. And this is, for example, and in some cases, even though I may not have uh, the metadata or, or an external reference, I have a painting. And I can at least link to that painting. And for some of the paintings that are online in Stadtmuseum, but I won't, well, actually, maybe I can just focus here. This is what the metadata looked like for one of the paintings, instance of. I have all the data that the museum has about this artwork. However, I have no online link to any of this stuff. I can't reference it because it's in their uh, collection management system. It's not available online yet, so how am I going to do this? Out there. There is hope. <laughs> do not despair. Um, so part of the combined... So the German authority control is run by the German National Library, the uh, Deutsche Nationalbibliothek, and they have a project running called GND4C, which is uh, the GND for culture data. And in fact, I presented on this topic a few days ago at the uh, annual meeting of the expert group on documentation of the Museums Federation of Germany. And there were people in the audience from the GND4C who have now said they will 
help me get at least these 19 artists who have no GND to at least get their ID so that we can start the process of, as has been said in another presentation today, uh, to actually, the moment the start is online in Wikidata and someone does a query and sees, hey, here, here is an artist where there's not much data about them, maybe there's a story to tell here, maybe we'd be interested in doing some research and to expand that. I mean, that's been the amazing effect of uploading a lot of this, uh, a lot of this data when there has been uh, IDs or there has been an ability to, to leverage all the linked data power, that all of a sudden so much more information is being collected about these artists who in the past have really been ignored. Yeah, so what are the lessons that we can lose, learn from all of this? How can we improve on past performance? <clears throat> I think it's difficult to find the right name to describe this. There is such a thing as the chief data officer. It's very much a commercial and, and business enterprise sort of thing, but what we notice is that in the institutions, and in the cultural heritage institutions, which have a, a personnel and resource problem anyway, we would like to have a chief data officer, at least someone who is responsible there for making sure that the metadata is of a high standard and that it's not just, there's a role in Germany called a Datenredakteur, I do not know what the English translation is, I could not find it, but someone who's maybe responsible to make sure that uh, there's no spelling mistakes in the data or that it's relatively good quality, but we actually need a bit more and a rose by any name would smell as sweet, so I don't really care what we call it, I care more about what they do. And what they need to do is to make strategic decisions regarding the data usage. Someone actually in the institutions needs to sit down and say, it's important that we get online because uh, I unfortunately missed the presentation on, uh, by the Met today to see what they've done with their data once they've uploaded it into Wikidata. But if we can explain to the institutions why it's important and they can see the reason for this, then maybe they will be able to make funds available or resources available to have someone to take this task of actually realizing a museum or a cultural heritage institution is really a data provider. They need the architecture to provide data. They need to know who wants to use the data. Um, is it digital humanist researchers? Is it just the general public? They could have a, one central system that can maybe feed into their website and also have an API. And one of the issues with the, uh, the DDB is they have an API. So the metadata that we upload into the DDB can be queried via API, however, you need an API key before you do that. So that makes Wikidata attractive again because I can just go to any Wikidata uh, Sparkle endpoint and basically do my querying. And we need to ensure high quality data. Um, that's the beginning of this whole process. Just for the 250 artists that, or 250 artworks that I uploaded, the data took so much work to try and massage it into a useful uh, form that would be really great to ensure data quality, and that would be the basic things, uniform measurements, so uniform uh, measurement system and controlled vocabularies as much as possible. And all of this compliant with relevant metadata standards. Uh, we always bang the drum for standards because the moment you use standards, you increase the ability to uh, connect your data to other forms of data out there. And then to avoid some of the issues, because I can understand that Wikidata also says, look, we're not your data repository, you can't just come here and dump your data. And the institutions, on the other hand, say, look, this is our curated data, this is stuff that we've spent years researching and I have spent many uh, employee hours working on. We don't just want to upload that to Wikidata and have it overwritten or deleted at some point. So I really like the idea of Wikibase, the idea that an institution could run its own Wikidata instance, where we really need to have a look and see if we can assist. Where is the pointy bit? Yep. Um, is in this bit here. So if you have an institution that has its own collection management system, we need to find a way, write scripts and support it as much as possible, to as automatically as possible get data into their local Wikibase instance or an instance run by another government institution, perhaps like Diggers, but I can't, I can't make that prediction at this stage. Um, that could then be used by Wikidata in terms of a synchronized or a federated query, and all of these things can, of course, then use wiki, uh, authority controls and so on. But if the institutions can be encouraged to set up their own Wikibases, 10, 15 years ago, very few museums had their own websites. I would hope that in five years, more institutions would have their own Wikibase or be prepared to use a Wikibase. Uh, and of course, it gets interesting when the moment you input it into a system like that, things will, problems, issues that are with the data will arise that you can hopefully feed back into the collection management system to improve their data in general. So in other words, something like a do-it-yourself authority control for the institution or even just a, a controlled vocabulary. If they just had a resource within their institution where they could say, we're going to choose this term, we're not going to go through a long standardization process, even if five years down the track, 
they decide it's the wrong term and they want to change the term, or at least I have a clear idea of what I'm talking about. It's a start. Um, but I have to say that this suggestion that I made was also met with quite a lot of skepticism because a lot of the, uh, uh, at, at this um, conference, because I think the people in the audience have also had bad experiences trying to set up these systems, and you know, there's the saying, uh, to err is human, but to really screw up you need a computer. So I can imagine if you've got uh, people trying to set up their own wiki bases, their own controlled vocabularies, a lot of things are going to go wrong, but it's a learning experience. And uh, we hope that something good would come out of it in the end. And this is something that was referenced in the uh, Wikibase inspirational uh, presentation this morning. The GND is now cooperating with, uh, with Wikimedia to actually see how Wikibase can be used for it, because it's part of the whole GND for C, uh, opening the very strictly controlled for libraries resource of the authority control to now say, hey, other GLAMs want to use it, other galleries, libraries, archives, and museums also want to use this resource. GND for C is trying to see how they could actually make that happen. And one of the things they're exploring is Wikibase. Yeah, and just the last point to say, if you're in Berlin on the 5th of December and you'd like to come to the Diggers Annual Conference where every year our partners present their projects, it's fascinating, we've got a very broad spe uh, spectrum. You're welcome to come along. Details there in German on the URL. Thank you for your attention. And I'll just point out, if you want, there is some reading, some interesting... Uh, this never loads for some reason, but it's actually an article by Linda Nochlin about why there are no great women artists from 1971. It was republished a few years ago uh, online. The link there will work. It's a fascinating article. Invisible Women, Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. Also fascinating, and this is a book about Niemeyer Weiber. Right. Did you show that? Mm-hmm, yeah. Questions? So, how did you initially find those women? Because they are in a museum database, yeah, I guess. Yeah. How did they end up in the museum database? Did so they have a work or? Yeah. So, so the uh, the museum has artworks by these artists. So they've basically got them in a storage facility somewhere, and they have it in their collection system, saying this is this painting by this and this artist. So they've got that data. Then you solve the notability problem, right? Well. It would if it was online, but it's not online. This collection it's resource, online. yeah, it's... Yeah, I can't reference That's it. not needed. Like, if you reference a book, that's also good enough. You could reference an offline platform. Yeah, yeah um, but again, it's, it's a question of, well, I don't even have an offline catalog. I could maybe say it's the museum, well, whichever collection yeah, management they're using. I, I was going to say, I understand it's a small museum, and maybe they don't have a very sophisticated... Well, Stadtmuseum's not small, but yeah. <laughs> right. Maybe they <laughs> don't have the resources to really put up something yeah. um, sophisticated metadata-wise, but you could literally have them publish even a press release, right? Even mm. like any, any kind, whatever mechanism they have of pushing data online that is by them, that yeah. is by the state museum, that can say, here is a list mm. of women who were mm. systematically excluded, and yet, here's what we know about them. And we say this as the State Museum. That is a source. Yeah. But um, this was exactly the problem that... So they did have this exhibition, that's online, but that's only 20 of, I think, 50 women artists. That yeah, they but they can say it about, about all of them. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's why I think the, the Wikidata admin then also did relax the rules a bit and let me keep that data in, because I did argue it. I mean, I had it all up yeah. on the Wikidata import page. But as I'm trying to say with Ida Maura Hahn, I don't have any external reference, and... I hope, though, with just getting the GND IDs, we'll have a, a, an opportunity right. to... I, I just wanted to mention, this is Andrew, and his, his ah, uh, talk is the one... I'll be wanting to his see. His talk okay. about the Met uh, yeah, is yeah. the one I mentioned to you about yeah. this morning, so yeah. you two should talk. Fantastic. Uh, because he's also doing interesting things with museums. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure you connect. And we should publish the art, some of the artworks from Wikidata to make the data more complete. Well, this, I mean, I, I should also point out that some of the things we uploaded... So the Stadtmuseum is running, uh, uh, is very focused at the moment with the Humboldt Forum, which is being set up in Berlin. Uh, of these artworks that were digitized, some of them have now run into rights issues, so some of them were taken offline again. Uh, there is... The moment we're digitizing this stuff, half our work is really dealing with legal issues uh, and trying to explain to the in institutions, because even if an artwork is in the public domain, when it's been digitized or photographed, certain rights are then ascribed to the person. But to be on work. Wikidata, it doesn't have to be in the uh, public domain. 
No, but it has, to be, it, has, it has to have a fairly unrestricted license to be on. Uh, not on Wikidata, sorry, but if I'm talking about the actual image, so I thought you meant the image. I'm itself. talking about Wikidata. The metadata itself? No, exactly. That's all been put online, CC0, no problem, but yeah. Hi. Your sources Hi. don't have to be online, so if they have mm -hmm. a printed catalogue, whether it's an exhibition catalogue or a mm -hmm. catalogue of the whole collection, you can create an item about that publication mm -hmm. and then use the stated in property to cite that. Mm -hmm. so that but that's the problem. Not the all the artists are in the catalogue. They do have a catalogue, but it's only 20 of 50, I think, with an artist. That's the whole issue. They, they select it out of their whole uh, um, Bestand, I can think of the German word, collection of artists. Yeah, they, uh, they only selected 20 of those artists, so there's still, not, there's, no, there's still no written record of them anyway. But, yeah. I could try that. Like I said, I mean, uh, hopefully, if in the next few weeks I can get the GND IDs of the 19 missing uh, artists, then. And further than that, if you can state that a painting is in a collection mm -hmm. and an artist is the creator of that painting, mm -hmm. or indeed the subject of mm -hmm. a self portrait painting, then I think that satisfies the requirement for inclusion in Wikidata. It seems to so far, yeah, no one's deleted them yet, because that was the problem too. I mean, the reason why those things got deleted is there was a gap of a few months between when the artists were uploaded and when I could complete uploading the, the, the paintings. But yeah, since, since all the paintings have been linked to now too, but I don't have for any of those, like Idemar Rahan, they're just statements at the moment without any qualifiers, without, uh, without any references. But yeah, hopefully that will change soon. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, I have a question concerning the GLAM institution you mentioned. Um, what do you th think are their learnings on this project? Because um, like Wikimedia Deutschland, we also have a lot of GLAM work. Mm. And then mm. uh, for me, it's interesting to see what's the institution thinking mm. about a collaboration with Wikidata for the future work. I mean, well, you I sound a bit disappointed, and then yeah. Well, this is exactly the part where I need I need the, the to be able to show them what they can actually do with the data online. Because at the moment, um, it's a battle for us even just to get them to deliver structured metadata. So we work a lot with Lido. That's what we pass on to the Deutsche Digitale Bibliothek. Um, it's a huge battle to get any data into Lido for a start, and then we upload it to the DDB, which has its own issues. Then uh, with Wikidata, I've sort of tried to show, we actually had Jason Evans two years ago give a presentation to sort of say, this is what you can do, but this is what we've done in Wales. But I don't know, every city's got its own speed and tempo, I don't know. Hopefully out of this Stadtmuseum with their data, we can start doing some interesting things, find some applications and, and other institutions that can maybe upload their data. But at the moment, the museums, the GLAMs are really, it's, it's just not on their radar because they're so... Uh, occupied with, with fundamental existential issues that, you know, linked data is, is for them like, what the hell are you wasting my time with that for? I've got to make sure I can, you know, pay my employees, of which there's only one for next year, you know. <laughs> yeah. But we try, that's, all, that's our role as we see it too. This whole funding program is supposed to kind of, I mean, the other major thing is long-term digital preservation. And we say to them, look, you can digitize this stuff, but having it on a hard drive is, is not good. You've got to have it into a proper system where in 100 years someone can actually uh, access this resource. So, yeah. I, th I feel your pain about the, um, uh, the relevance because I ran into a lot of these same issues at the Wikipedia, especially mm. the German language Wikipedia has these really strong Very relevance brutal. criteria that are absolutely absurd yeah. and tend to exclude a lot of, a lot of important information. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, would it help to change the relevance criteria? Would that at all be possible? Uh, because I'm afraid, of course, that people will be afraid that then mm. unnotable, whatever that means, things would, would manage to get in. Well, this is it. I mean, I, I, I kind of... <laughs> I think the moment someone makes an effort to upload something it becomes notable to a degree. And, and uh, I think the criteria at this stage, though, are actually quite flexible. But I do think you, 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 you run into that issue of there are notability criteria. There is, there is a process that's been put in place. But it still depends on what an admin does. I mean, at that time, when I got in touch with that admin, he deleted, he or she had deleted 150,000 different items. So you are, there's a certain degree of arbitrariness in the whole process, because at least I could convince him to put it back on. But I know from the Wikidata mailing list, I mean, there is quite a few people who have run into that issue where stuff has been deleted. So I don't, I think the solution is to go the route, as I understand the Wikidata is, is proposing to, of Wikibase installations. They're making it a lot easier. The Wikibase Docker is a lot easier to install. I tried to install... Uh, about a year ago and struggled and I managed to get an instance up and running and actually usable uh, very easily with the, with the uh, Docker container uh, and think that's the way to go. If you can get the institutions to see how easy it is to set it up, you know, 
15 years ago, they didn't have websites, now they have websites. And I would hope for Berlin, at least, that we can maybe get a Wikibase instance going and get a few museums to upload their curated data and then see how we can feed that into Wikidata. And then I think everyone's happy, I would hope. But, yeah. I'm going to ask a question you're unlikely to be able to answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Sure. I'm curious about the women whose artworks are, haven't been collected mm -hmm. by the institutions, mm -hmm. because it sounds to me like there's a, a large group of women mm -hmm. artists, some of whom won't have had their paintings collected and don't appear to be in the record anywhere mm -hmm. as a result. Is there any movement or any uh, research being undertaken or anything you're aware of to try and find these women and get them into the record? It's no, like the, an extra no. step. No, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is the thing. We can only start with the museums, what they've got. Basically, the, you know, the, the Stadtmuseum gets a lot of um, uh, donations as well from, mm. from people around, and then if maybe something turns up, but they go, well, we don't know who this artist is, and mm. we can try to, mm. to track it back. That's the only uh, sort of serendipitous way it's going to happen, but mm. I think there is... Uh, Berlin and Germany with its history has lost so much artwork through bombing and destruction yeah. and whatever too that I think there's a lot that has been lost yeah. uh, uh, for permanently but yeah. Okay, mm. yeah. thank you. Okay. There's a group, um, there's a group uh, I can't remember the name of for the life of me but um, they uh, actually do a lot of work with Italian artists. There's also work done in the UK to kind of bring back women uh, artists back to, to the front. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think these, all these local um, initiatives might need to do, to like start working together to, to do something global to, to push more for it. Maybe, maybe that would do something more. <laughs> um, I wanted uh, to in inquire if you um, if if, it, if there is a right direction to go to uh, animate uh, institutions to take part in in uh, making their data. Um, linked or open or in some kind of way available? Should, should there be um, other institutions approaching them? Jealousy. And say, it has to be jealousy. Oh. <laughs> it's the only way you're going to do it. Yeah, I see. You need to get one, uh, one institution leading the way and people saying, wow, look oh. what they can do with their data. We want that too. I think, that, I think that's the way uh, web servers got going, really. And I think that's the only way linked data is going to work is to make them jealous. So um, yeah. they, they, you, you think that uh, the institutions that are not having uh, this great linked data, Wikibase instance stuff um, are going to uh, say, yeah, we need that, and then uh, are trying to find some people that can set it up for them? Or are they, um, should they approach other institutions then that can help them with it? Uh, or but which, which is the right direction? Yeah, for them to well, go? this, I mean, for a start, I mean, I think you've got to realize too that data are a process as well. It's never finished, it's always something that you're working on. And uh, we would encourage any institution to take the first step, but certainly to get them into co uh, cooperation. So, what the Stadtmuseum does, the Stadtmuseum Berlin, has helped a lot of smaller museums because then they say, okay, look, we've got this stuff, we need to do something with it, and then they'll share it with the Stadtmuseum, so to speak, and help them get it online. But we, we really have institutions where there's just two people working on it in their part-time. Um, it's going to take a while before they get on that trajectory, but I would hope that as, as the process has become better, as Wikibase gets easier to use, and as people get to see what the advantages are of it. But yeah, I, I really think it is, it's, just, it's a process that you're always going to have to support, and it's something you're always going to have to make clear to the funding institutions, that it's not something that they just throw some money out and then it's done. It's going to need permanent funding. Libraries need permanent funding. Uh, anything to do with digital resources also needs permanent funding, I think, yeah. Uh, sorry, I think we have just run out of time for questions, so I encourage you to keep talking out of the session, and thank you so much to our speaker and all the attendees. Thank you. Thanks.